Sea otters are incredible, and they're considered to be one of the few animals that use tools. This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Sea otters use a variety of things to open up the long list of prey items that they feed on. So they'll use rocks, they'll use shells, you know, all kinds of different things to pry open food, to pound food. It's always a delight to watch. Jim Curland is a sea otter conservationist and marine biologist. Jim, why do you think we're so drawn to sea otters? My interpretation is that we see a lot of similarities in sea otters with our own domestic pets, cats and dogs, that sea otters are extremely playful animals. They're cute. <laughs> They're awfully charismatic. And you can just spend a lot of time watching them and their behaviors. They interact a lot. They're just very playful. And, you know, I think they're just a real emblem of the areas where they're found. Jim tells me that sea otters are also referred to as an indicator species. Sea otters, unfortunately, are susceptible to a lot of disease. They're one of the more diseased wildlife populations. And it's thought that some of the disease they come down with has relations to the land-sea connection. So what we do on land comes into the ocean and affects sea otters. And if sea otters are dying of a variety of different things, then it's a wake-up call for us and the health of the ocean. The population of sea otters in California has varied widely. Historically, before the fur trade, it was thought there were about 16,000 sea otters. Primarily due to hunting, that number dwindled to just a few. In fact, some people thought they were extinct in California until a small population was found near Big Sur, maybe 50 or so. Now, sea otter numbers have rebounded, but Jim says they still go up and down. They've um, really bounced back and forth. You know, in the last decade or more, the population has suffered more declines and it has upswings. We did just recently get census results that USGS monitors every year, and the census results were somewhat positive. They showed a, a bit of an uptick in the population trend. But I think what we get from that is that we're cautiously optimistic because it wasn't a huge uptick. And what we do know is that last year was the highest on record for mortality in sea otters. There were 335 dead sea otters that were recovered. And that's greater than 10% of the population. So I think there's still a lot of concern. We're worried about the population. A slight uptick is certainly better than the alternative, but we would need to see a sustained trend of population growth before we could think we're out of the woods. How can we help sea otters? Well, Jim says there are a number of things we can do, starting with what we put on our lawns, down our drains, our agricultural and urban practices can impact the ocean and ultimately sea otters. In 2006, legislation was passed in California creating a new way to donate money on our taxes to help sea otters. So on the state income tax forms, Californians have a way to contribute to the California Sea Otter Fund, which in turn benefits sea otter research and conservation efforts. If you went up to the average person and ask them how do they think sea otters are doing, they'd say, well, we see them out there, so they must be doing great. And I think that that's where, you know, increased awareness, increased education to the public is helpful to let folks know what's going on with sea otters and, and what we can do to try to turn around a trend that is a concern. My thanks to Jim Curland, and here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action. Don't flush kitty litter. It may contain a deadly pathogen that harms sea otters, and dispose of kitty litter in trash receptacles instead of flushing it down the toilet. I'm Jerry Kay.